New Jersey is easily one of the best U.S. states for roller coasters. You may be surprised to hear this considering the small size of the state, but throughout the entirety of New Jersey, there are more and more coasters to ride. I've been to this state on two separate occasions, with the first being in the summer of 2020 when I got to visit Six Flags Great Adventure, Playland's Castaway Cove, Casino Pier, and Jillian's Wonderland Pier. Then in 2021, I got to come back and visit Nickelodeon Universe at the American Dream Mall and Maury's Piers. The initial plan was also to return to Six Flags Great Adventure for their all-new Jersey Devil Coaster, but unfortunately it was closed while I was visiting the state. With that being said, I've ridden just about every other major roller coaster in New Jersey, and today I will be ranking them up from worst to best. The only problem is I don't want to leave Jersey Devil out since it's quite a significant ride and is all the buzz in the state right now. So instead of giving my thoughts on the attraction, I will be inviting a special guest to talk about it. Before we get there though, I want to mention that there are some coasters in the state that I have not ridden that may have some potential to make this list. Those include Hellcat at Clementon Park, which will be opening in 2022 after being standing but not operating for two seasons. Also, Zola Loco at Casino Pier and Looping Star at Kingsburg maybe could have made it, but probably would have been more like 21 or 22 or something. More importantly, there is an Alpine coaster at Mountain Creek Water Park up north that may be of interest. But now that those honorable mentions are out of the way, there is one last thing I want to say. For those of you who care to do so, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe down below. Additionally, if you've been to the state of New Jersey, I would love to hear about your favorite coasters in the state as well. But with that being said, I think we should be ready to begin the list. So without further ado, these are the top 20 roller coasters in New Jersey. Number 20, Wild Waves at Playland's Castaway Cove. The first roller coaster to make this list can be found at one of New Jersey's many seaside amusement parks. The ride circles all around the park's star attraction Gale Force and features many moments of airtime. The ride also is one of ENF Myler's largest coaster projects as what they've done are mostly of the junior coaster variety. For what it's worth, it's a solid family coaster and it's also quite the interesting credit to have jotted down on my count. Number 19, Nickelodeon Slime Streak at Nickelodeon Universe. From one family ride to another, this Chance Rides creation is a fairly zippy ride. While it doesn't have the airtime of Wild Waves, it feels somewhat fast paced and just purely fun. If there is one complaint that keeps it from being a spot higher, it would be that the trains are not the most comforting to taller guests. But nonetheless, it is a good ride that fits nicely in its respective park. Number 18, Runaway Tram at Maury's Piers. Despite the fact that this is a small family roller coaster, Runaway Tram might be one of the biggest surprises I've had while credit hunting. From off-ride, the coaster doesn't look like anything too special, but it's extremely smooth, gives relatively good forces, and takes you through the layout two times. Out of all the family coasters on the Jersey Shore, this one may very well be the best one. Number 17, Shredder at Nickelodeon Universe. I know the words family coaster might be getting a little repetitive here, but don't worry, this is the last one on the list. The coaster is a Gerslauer spinning coaster that's uniquely intertwined with its big brother TMNT Shell Razor. While I didn't find it to spin too much, the layout was a big surprise for me. It seemed like it would never end, and the elements making this up were generally a fun time. So if I'm being totally honest, Shredder might be one of the best spinning coasters I've ever been on. Number 16, Sea Serpent at Maury's Piers. Our first thrill coaster to make this list is starting things off strong. It may look to be a typical Vacoma boomerang, but Sea Serpent is so much more than that. Maury's Piers has been giving this coaster such good maintenance, keeping it perfectly smooth with just best restraints too. Relative to other Vacoma boomerangs, this is by far the best one I have and probably will ever ride. Number 15, Hydrus at Casino Pier. This little Gerslauer Eurofighter coaster offers a stupidly short but stupidly fun ride experience. All of its inversions are loads of fun, its initial 97 degree drop is a blast, and this is all complemented by the ride's lap bar only restraints. It's also one of the smoothest and most comfortable thrill coasters I've experienced to date, meaning any member of the family should be able to get a real kick out of Hydrus. Number 14, Fly the Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers. I know what you're thinking, how can the notorious Vacoma SLC be put a spot higher than the perfectly engineered Gerslauer Eurofighter Hydrus? Well, just like Sea Serpent in the same park, this coaster rides strikingly different from any other Vacoma SLC I've ridden. Maury's Piers has kept this ride running glossy smooth, which might be hard to believe, but it really makes the layout so much more enjoyable. Getting to enjoy the punchy positive Gs and fast paced course without any head banging is something I've always wanted to see on one of these things. Plus, it's got many near miss elements with nearby water slides, which only add to the genuinely awesome ride experience. So in conclusion, this coaster isn't just good for an old Vacoma, it's good, period. Number 13, Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure. Originally opening at Kentucky Kingdom as Chang, this large-scale B&M stand-up coaster gives a very intense ride. Because of the standing rider position, you are exposed to wildly intense positive Gs on all of the inversions and valleys. It might not be a sensation that everyone will enjoy, but its sheer power is something I have to commend the ride on as a roller coaster enthusiast. I wouldn't say this is a must-do attraction at Great Adventure since they have so many other roller coasters, but if you have the time to do so, definitely give it a go. 
Number 12, Great White at Maury's Piers. The best roller coaster on the three piers at Maury's Piers is a large scale CCI wooden coaster that absolutely dominates its area of the park. It's a very imposing attraction that catches the eyes of many, but despite that, how does this coaster ride? If I'm being totally honest, not as great as I was expecting. I don't mean that by it wasn't smooth, because for a wooden coaster on the ocean, it was perfectly comfortable. Rather, I was just expecting a bit more airtime, which seemed like it would be the most prominent strength of this ride. Instead, Great White seemed to focus more on laterals and scenery, which is why it still clucks in as high as number 12 on the list. A very fun ride, I was just expecting a tiny bit more from it. Number 11, Joker at Six Flags Great Adventure. Just a heads up, there's a big wave of roller coasters from Six Flags Great Adventure taking the next five spots on this list. Joker in particular is an SNS40 free spin coaster similar to many rides you can find at the other Six Flags parks across North America. Now despite the fact that it's relatively common to come by, I find these attractions to be really fun. In a different yet similar fashion to Green Lantern, the sensations provided may not be accommodating to everyone's interest, but I personally really enjoy the intense flipping and smooth ride experience. And believe it or not, from what I've written, Joker does remain one of the better 40 free spins I've been on. I just found this one to be a bit more intense than the others. So sure, it may not be anything too special, but I definitely like the ride. Number 10, Bizarro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Having ridden Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is a mirrored clone to this ride, I wasn't taken back after riding Bizarro. But no doubt, it was a super fun, intense floorless coaster that fixes a lot of the issues many have with Scream. By that, it's got plenty of special effects and nice scenery that does amplify the overall experience. Bizarro, while being the original floorless coaster built, still holds up as one of the more forceful ones today. Number 9, Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Great Adventure. As with many other roller coasters at this park, Superman can be found at numerous other Six Flags theme parks. With that being said, it makes perfect sense because this ride is just a lot of fun and it's a crowd pleaser. The flying sensation offered by the prone riding position is great and makes so many of these elements feel more exciting. Plus, that pretzel loop following the drop is still one of the most intense inversions I've ever experienced on any coaster. It may not be a unique ride to this park, but I still think it serves its place nicely in the park's overall ride lineup. Number 8, Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great Adventure. I know it might start to sound repetitive, but Batman the Ride is yet another cloned roller coaster at this park. Fortunately though, it is the last and best cloned coaster from this park to make the list. The ride is not too impressive in size, but its compact nature makes its elements all the more intense. I had already been on plenty of Batman clones throughout my theme park travels before this one, but there's no doubt that if it's your first time, you'll be blown away by the intensity. These small inverted coasters are known for their incredible whip, pacing, and downright violent positive g-forces. So despite the short ride time and scale of the attraction, Batman pocks a shocking punch in my opinion. Number 7, Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Finally, the last coaster at this park before we can take a little bit of a break from Great Adventure. Get this, Nitro is not a clone and it's an awesome ride, something worth celebrating people. The coaster is a hyper coaster built by B&M, which is a term used to describe any full circuit roller coaster that stands between 200 and 299 feet. Because it fits this criteria, Nitro is a pretty large ride, but what it does with its height and speed is even more impressive. It has many huge camelbacks, providing good sustained floater airtime. That's definitely the strength of this ride, floater airtime. It's not nearly as good as what I felt on similar rides of its kind, but for what Nitro itself offers, it's got some pretty good stuff still. Plus, it is some of the only floater you'll find in this park, which the general public really seem to eat up. There's really no wonder why Nitro gets some of the longest wait times at Six Flags Great Adventure. I completely get why it's a crowd pleaser. Number 6, TMNT Shell Razor at Nickelodeon Universe. Here in the United States, Gerslauer isn't as prominent of a roller coaster manufacturer as they are in places like Europe. But the largest of their rides that can be found here is ironically located indoors. TMNT Shell Razor is a huge Gerslauer Eurofighter coaster themed and standing for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The ride features some wild elements like an uber intense LSM launch, a beyond vertical drop, seven funky inversions, and so much more. And I think it's worth rewinding to the drop because that's what this ride's gonna be most well known for for most people. Its drop is angled at 121.5 degrees beyond vertical, making it the steepest official drop on any roller coaster in the world. It's just amazing how much this ride packs in, especially when you consider its indoor environment. Now despite the fact that TMNT Shell Razor might be the biggest roller coaster at Nickelodeon Universe, it's actually not my personal favorite. That honor belongs to dot 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 Number 5, Sandy's Blasting Bronco at Nickelodeon Universe. For those of you who haven't seen it, I recently made a review video for this ride where I go much more in-depth into the ride experience, but in short, it's a compact masterpiece. Essentially, the ride is comprised of two ridiculously intense LSM launches, solid positive g-forces, and the whippiest inversions in the world. It may be a small launch to looping coaster, but it's beyond impressive in terms of forces. I think this and TMNT Shell Razor make the trip to Nickelodeon Universe alone worth it. Number 4, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. As I said in the beginning of the video, I have not had the pleasure of riding this coaster, so instead I will be inviting Wooden Warrior Girl, aka Samantha, to voice her opinions on the ride. Um. She doesn't actually live in New Jersey, she lives in Connecticut, but she goes to the park all the time, so whatever, it works. Jersey Devil is, like, really fun, but that's all there is to it. 
The ride doesn't come close to the level of other RMCs, but I still think it's a great ride. The best element is the drop, especially in the back. I would like to say the rest of the ride has airtime, but to be honest, it's hard to tell with the restraints. They come down so much and it's impossible to get room to begin with. Your whole body feels incredibly restrained, to the point where it gets pretty uncomfortable. That, along with the slight rattle, damaged the ride experience for me a little bit. Other than that, I would still say it's a great fit for the park. It's a really fun and enjoyable coaster that I find great pleasure in whenever I get the chance to ride it. It's always just a fun ride that I would consider to be a top coaster in the state of New Jersey. However, it's not as good as Wooden Warrior. Number 3, Gale Force at Playland's Castaway Cove. By far the best seaside roller coaster I've ridden, not just in New Jersey, but in general, is Gale Force. I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but I firmly believe that this coaster is one of, if not the most underrated launch coaster in the world. As with Sandy's Blasting Bronco, I have a recent review for this ride where I go much more in depth, but it's one of the most unique and punchy launch coasters out there. Its elements are just so funky and the transitions feel so unnatural, but it's done in a smooth manner while also pulling some crazy forces. If you can only choose one park to hit in New Jersey, well then I'd recommend Six Flags Great Adventure but if you can only choose one park on the coast of New Jersey, then I'd recommend Maury's Piers. But just after that would be Playland's Castaway Cove, okay? I know we weren't really getting anywhere, but the point is, is that this is one of the best coasters in the state, and it makes the trip to this park beyond worth it. Number 2, King Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. Many of you know this ride is the tallest roller coaster in the world, and let me just say, the ride experience holds up to its records. If you ride this thing in the front row, which please do it, it is so worth it, that you will be shocked out of proportions by this ride. King Ka has the craziest sense of speed ever, it's very intense, and it'll easily get that adrenaline pumping. It also might be over before you know it, but it has to be one of the most unreal roller coasters I've done for that front row ride experience. Funny enough, a lot of roller coaster enthusiasts tend to hate on this ride more so than praise it because of its bulky restraints and rough ride experience but I personally disagree with both of those things. It's honestly not much worse than Dragster at all. And even if it were, I think the positives for this ride more than make up for its negatives because it is absolutely an insane ride. Highly, highly recommended. Number 1, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast, this was probably very obvious, but if you're a general public, you were likely expecting King to Ka on top. Allow me to introduce this coaster because it is absolutely wild and worth noting. The ride is a prefabricated wooden coaster capable of extreme positive and negative g-forces relative to other wood coasters. Since it disengages with the lift tilt, it's a powerhouse till the end with its near-perfect sequencing and pacing, which put it amongst the top roller coasters in the world for many. Trust me, this ride is not for the faint of heart, and if you are unsettled by intensity and high g's, I'm not not sure if I'd recommend this or King Ka in all fairness. But hey, you only live once and El Toro may be worth the ride anyways knowing it's one of the best rides out there. Currently, it's my number 4 roller coaster I've ridden against 425 plus so there's really no wonder why it made the top spot. By now, you've probably been able to figure out that New Jersey has a damn good lineup of roller coasters. All 20 rides on this list provide their own fun ride experiences and I'd recommend them all. But any of the top 6 or 7 are basically elite for what they're worth and make the trip to New Jersey worth it alone. Anyways, if you enjoyed today's content, it would mean the world to me if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to drop a comment ranking your favorite New Jersey roller coasters. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.